take some clay and I prepare it by pressing it against the tabletop to compress out the air pockets. I'm going to make it into a slab. I want it to be about a half inch thick, maybe a little bit thicker than that. And I am stretching it and pressing it and pressing it with my hand like this, putting my weight on it as I press it. And this is about the thickness I want. I want it to be about even in thickness all the way through. Now I have to decide how I want to wrap it around my armature. So it just kind of depends on the way it fits the best. And I'm going to wrap it around this way. Now I don't really want to press my clay down and make it a lot thinner than it already is. I just want to form it around my armature and try to close it up around the armature. Now I'm not going to really stretch it to fill the whole armature because then I would be making it thinner which I don't really want to do so I need more clay. And it's important to clay, keep your clay really moist and pliable not to have it out in the air too much because if you do then it's going to dry out and crack and become hard to use. I made another slab about the same thickness as the first one. Now I'm going to patch it in over the part that's um, still open where the armature shows through. And since it's soft and pliable, I can just mold it right around the other armature and kind of overlap it and smooth it together. And what I want to do is smooth it together to the point where you don't see that there are two separate pieces of clay anymore. Because as you probably know by now, clay dries out. And when it dries out, it shrinks. And when it shrinks, if it's two different pieces are going to shrink apart and the clay project's going to fall apart. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, smoothing it all out and doing that without thinning out the wall of clay around my armature. Just getting out the wrinkles and imperfections and forming it and making more of a pronounced um, neck, you know, difference between the head and the body. And it's this that I'm going to be using to attach all of my other things to my wings and my legs and my feet and all that. So it's just about ready to go. When I fire this, the aluminum foil will stay inside of it, but it won't hurt anything. Okay, now I could, took some more clay out from under my wet rag and I'm going to use it for the legs. I don't need quite as much as this, so I'm going to cut some off. And now I'll try to form it into kind of a cylinder by rolling it between my hands and by flattening the ends and decide if it needs to be even smaller yet. His legs are really, really short. And they should fit on there like that, so I'm going to form it into a little bit more of a cylinder now by rolling it again and by pressing on the ends and it should fit like this and I'm going to do the other one the same way I'm going to make another cylinder the same size as the first one by rolling it and then flattening the ends and that one will fit on here So now what I'm going to do is smooth uh, clay from the leg down onto the body. And you might have noticed that I didn't do score and slip here. If you clay, keep your clay really moist, you might not always have to do the score and slip for the joining. But a lot of times you do. But it's really important for whenever you're joining clay to smooth the two pieces together so you don't see that they're two separate pieces because if they stay two separate pieces that are just kind of put together, the clay shrinks when it dries and then they'll fall apart. I have some more clay that I've kind of rolled into a ball and I'm flattening into a disc about a quarter inch thick. And then I'm going to draw one of the shapes of his feet on there. His feet are like little ovals too. And I can draw it lightly and then I can cut it out after I draw it or I can just cut it out without drawing it first but sometimes it's better to draw it first on the clay so that if you don't like it you can always rub out the line and, and try again. 
Now I'm using this one for the pattern for my other one so that I have two that are the same size and shape. All the way around like that. And then all the way around like this. So now I have two oval pieces for his feet. Okay, now I'm going to form them a little bit because they're not going to have just kind of a cut off edge. It's going to be more kind of smooth and rounded around the edge. So I just kind of mold them between my fingers like this. So these are my two little uh, ovals that I'm using for his feet. And I'm going to score the end of his legs where the feet are going to be joined and then score on the foot where the legs going to join the foot. Remember, they're just little uh, lines dug into the clay, and they can't be very deep, otherwise you kind of shred the clay. And I paint my slip on each one of the scored areas. Like that. And then I put the scored areas together so that his foot's attached to the leg. And then I, I'm using this to smooth the clay together, and a lot of times that's easier. It's just a little uh, blade tool. It's a blunt blade made out of plastic. And for doing things like smoothing the clay together after you've joined it, actually I think this works better than fingers. And here's the other foot. And now I'm just going to smooth it too. So I score, slip, and smooth and that's how I get things to stay together. And using a little blade tool for the smoothing works very well. Okay, so now I have a little body, little legs, little feet. And, and now for the little wings. So I'll get some more clay out and I'm going to uh, squeeze it together to try to force out air pockets and things like that. And then press it to make a little slab. It's about a quarter inch thick, something like that. I want it to all be the same thickness. And now I'm going to draw in the shape for his wings. Now his wings are like little ovals, but they're pointed on the ends. And then the rounded end is where I'm going to actually join it to the body. So I cut that one out and I lay it on the clay and I'm going to uh, draw around it so that I have two that are alike all the way around like that. And so I have two that are really close to being identical and now I'm just going to form them a little bit to make the edges more like soft and rounded and less like something that was just kind of cut out. And I'll do both of them before I attach them like this. And they're going to attach right there. And so I'm going to smooth the clay down really well. And this clay is really moist. And I couldn't do it this way if it wasn't. So I attach it in place and then I'm going to smooth the clay so that it blends with the other clay so it doesn't look like it's actually two separate pieces in order to keep it from uh, starting to fall off when it dries. So now I'm starting to get more and more of the little penguin. I've got his little legs, his little body, his little head, and his little wings. And now I'm going to use my blade tool to smooth a little bit better with the wings. Okay, so that's what I got so far. Okay, now for his little beak. And his beak is actually pointed, but you don't see it like that from the front. So I'm getting some clay ready. I'm rolling it into a ball. And I'm just cutting off a piece of the ball. And so part of it's flat and part of it's rounded. 
I'm leaving the flat part flat and I'm forming the round part into more of a point to make the beak. And so it's like a little cone shape like that and it'll fit right on his little face like that and so then I want to smooth that so that it stays together too and remember you can only do it this way if the clay is really moist if it's even a little bit dried out then you need to make sure you use the score and slip method and now I'm using my blade tool to kind of to smooth so that the clay looks like it's only one piece and not two that are joined together so now I have his little face and his little beak. Now I'm going to incise some of his facial features in. So I'm using a needle tool, but you could use a toothpick too. And a lot of times I draw the lines really shallow before I actually make them permanent because sometimes I want to uh, correct a mistake or change something that I did. So now I'm making the line where his beak is supposed to open. If you hold your uh, tool to the side instead of like straight up and down, you get a smoother line. And so now this is for where his eyes are. And you can see it on the picture there. And then I wanted to try to get the other one the same. And that might be one reason why it's good to draw lightly first because if I find out that it's not the same, then I'm probably going to want to change it. So I'm holding my needle to the side and taking a look at it. And the one is a little bit too small, so I'm going to rub it out and try again. Now another way I could do this is to make an actual pattern for that part of it out of paper and then trace the pattern that I made and then flip it over and trace it on the other side and then I would get them identical. So this looks pretty close though. And so now I'm going to uh, incise them in permanently. So I'll go a little bit deeper holding my needle to a slant off to the side. Now I take the handle of my needle tool and I'm going to press a circle into the middle for his eyes. It doesn't have to be real deep, but just deep enough to really be visible and sharp. Like that. And then I can take my needle tool and just make a little hole for the pupil for each eye. Like that. So now I've got it as far as his face goes and the main body parts. All right, now the little cape thing that actually turns into a tail that he has. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make the front of it that little kind of collar thing that he's got there. And so I have to flatten out some clay. And I've always remembered to keep my clay moist under a rag so it's not all dried out and frustrating to work with. And I'm making a little bit of a slab, about a quarter inch thick. It'll fit under here, but I have to sharp uh, shape it a little bit. So I'm going to very carefully draw it into there. It's just two curved lines like this, and then like this, and I've cut it out. And now I'm going to kind of shape the edges a little bit. and kind of fix it and smooth it. Then it's going to end up over here. And I'll put it right underneath his little chin. And I'll start smoothing it in place, at least on the ends here. And the blade tool works really good for this. Yeah, there we go kind of shape them. 
Okay, so I don't have too much more to go yet. So I'll put the rest of my clay together and it's going to fit on the back. It's going to be his little cape that turns into a tail. And so I'm kind of kneading it and pressing on it. And now I'm making a little slab by pressing on it with the heel of my hand. And I want it about a quarter inch thick or so, maybe an eighth inch thick, no, no thicker, no thinner than that. It's going to fit on here like this. And so first of all, I'm going to kind of slice that and that is going to be the top edge that goes around the back of his neck. And now I'm going to slice here and here and then slice a little bit here and here. And that's going to make the little cape that hangs off of his shoulders. That's what it looks like. Okay, form the edges a little bit. And then it's going to fit right around the back of his neck. And so I'm going to smooth it into place. If it's attached up here, it should be okay but it needs to be really attached. I need to make sure that I really smooth it so that I don't see two separate pieces of clay. Like that. And I can form his little tails. And so I kind of have to adjust him because he kind of gets squished getting moved around a lot. But that's how it looks. Okay, smooth it a little bit there. And then one thing I need to do actually is make little toes. Okay, and so I got that much done. Once I have them all put together, I can go ahead and start uh, carving in some details and refining some of the shapes and some of the edges and things like that so that he looks a lot more like what I want him to look like. Before I set him to dry I have to make sure that he's in exactly the right position that I want him to be in because once he's started to get dry and get stiff I'm not going to be able to move the position of his legs or arms or other body parts anymore and if I do try to do that then he's going to break. So all of the things that I need to do should be done right now while he's still pliable. So right now what I'm doing is just kind of carving in here so that I can show that there is a divide between the cape and his body or maybe those would be his wings. So remember look at the basic forms that your cartoon character is made up of. Start with his body, add his head, then his feet and legs, arms or wings, and the rest of his details.